so welcome to part three of the Shakespeare introduction. Uh, we come so far that we're actually in London now, uh, which is of course where, where Shakespeare lived and, and worked. Um, so London during the Renaissance, uh, quite, you know, a large city for the time. Uh, lots of people living in London. Uh, it was growing very fast. Uh, there was, you know, a great mixture of people of all classes uh, trying to support themselves in, in, in that town. Um, the theatre, the, which is called most often the Elizabethan theatre during this time, because of course Queen Elizabeth, who was ruling England, was very much interested in the arts. Uh, and that's probably why it's all theatre was, you know, as public and as popular as it was uh, in England during this time, even though there was a lot of, you know, uh, Puritan forces thinking the theatre was, you know, uh, filled with immoral and, and, you know, not for the people. Uh, but the Elizabethan theatre, you know, it's a sort of golden age uh, uh, period for theatre in England, so... There was a lot of playhouses being built in London uh, and the playhouses were often built because, you know, there were uh, actors who formed companies and then they worked together and they, you know, they had to get one of these patrons that we talked about, someone who could sponsor them, give them money and, uh, you know, hopefully uh, somewhere along the way they could also afford to, to build, a play, build a playhouse where they could, could work. Uh, if, if you've seen the movie Shakespeare in Love, I think it's, it gives us probably a very good view on how life was during the Elizabethan theatre. I think it, it's, it could be quite realistic, actually. I, I think it's a brilliant movie. Um, and these playhouses, uh, they, often, uh, they often performed, you know, a different play every night. So a company of actors could have maybe 30 plays during one one year, one season. So they had to, well, rehearse a lot, I guess, <laughs> because people wanted to be able to go to the same playhouse for, you know, maybe a couple of nights in a row and see a different play every time. So uh, it's, a, it's a bit different to how theatre works today. Um, the playhouses uh, could often be closed down for different reasons, either because uh, there was something uh, with the play uh, that the church or, or, or uh, the, the, the court would, you know, react to uh, and then they would shut down the, the playhouse or uh, it could be shut down because of, you know, sicknesses spreading in, in London. There were still, you know, uh, plagues and epidemic diseases spreading because people were living in very tight quarters and uh, you know, uh, hygiene wasn't really invented and, and, and not penicillin either for that matter. So, uh, so and this often happened during the summertime, you know, because of the heat also as well and bacteria, bacteria growing, etc. So a lot of the uh, company of actors actually toured the countryside during the summer months to, you know, get out of London and be able to support themselves. Um, I have a rough number uh, from the year of 1616, uh, where there was supposedly somewhere around 300,000 people living in London by then. And it's, you know, with today's figures, that doesn't sound like a lot, but we can imagine during this time that there were a lot of people. Uh, and approximately somewhere between two or three thousand people per night went to see a play. So even though the playhouses in theory were open for everyone, of course, most people couldn't go uh, and see plays. Uh, well, firstly, because of course it cost money, so you had to have money to spare to buy a ticket. Uh, but most importantly, you had to have time to sit down for maybe two or three hours and just do nothing, which most people couldn't because, you know, they were working uh, almost around the clock just to be able to support themselves, uh, or not even that maybe. Uh, so most of the people who actually went to see the place on a regular basis were, uh, well, people from the higher classes, of course, and especially women, because women weren't expected to, you know, work for a living or allowed to work for a living. Uh, so a lot of women from the middle and higher classes in society uh, 
a lot of students, uh, you know, who had could afford to, to go to university and they had some free time as well. Uh, so just when they were on leave, had the time to go and see a play. Uh, and also, quite surprisingly, uh, some of the lower classes, uh, you know, with a more flexible work schedule, like thieves and prostitutes, for instance. So these were some of the, you know, the, the people going to see uh, plays. Uh, the theatre, uh, I think you, you've seen probably pictures of, of Shakespeare's The Globe, which they have rebuilt in England. So you can actually go to The Globe and see Shakespearean plays today, which is quite brilliant, I think. Um, uh, and it was like that, that, you know, the balconies were the fine seats. So if you were from the higher classes, you would sit on the balconies and, and, and look at the play. But if you were, you know, if you had cheap seats, you had to stand on the floor. And this is, of course, for us today, it's the opposite. Well, you don't have to stand on the floor, but if you have the good seats, you'll sit on, on, on the floor. Uh, and the balconies, the higher up you get, the, the cheaper the seats tend to be. So that's quite interesting. Um, so this is, you know, a quick introduction to, to the Elizabethan theatre. You can just mention two names, uh, Thomas Kidd and Christopher Marlowe are two of the great playwrights uh, preceding, uh, preceding Shakespeare. So this is before Shakespeare becomes popular, you can look them up. <laughs> so onwards, onwards.